Welcome everybody to opening day here at Osh Hall Stadium, home of the Tommies, where we are taking on the Old Dominion Monarchs from Conference USA. And it should be a good one because not only are we starting a brand new season of St. Thomas football, but we're also introducing a few custom recruits as well today. First custom recruit that I want to talk about is Andrew Green. He will be replacing Tim Smith on the roster. And right now he's listed at number four on the depth chart. So we'll definitely see him in some four wide receiver as well as five wide sets. Uh, definitely can expect to see him spare, at least sparingly for this first season on his on campus for the St. Thomas Tommies. Then we have Malachi Jackson. He play he's going to be playing right outside linebacker is actually going to be replacing Brandon Turner. Um his middle name is Milton, so it's supposed to be Malachi Milton Jackson, but I couldn't get his middle name fitted in there, but he is going to be playing right outside linebacker and since he's replacing Brandon Turner, he's going to be our starting right outside linebacker for the team going into season three and then the final custom recruit that we are going to introduce for this season is joe henry he's going to be replacing andre wade on the squad and you know he's a decent dude 54 overall which you know is right around expected for a one-star prospect we since we have so many corners on the team we are still redshirting him for this season, so expect to see a much improved version of Joe Henry going into season four. But with all that being said, though, it's time to get started with the third season of St. Thomas football. As the first play of the season will be a short throw over to Lala Davis over the middle. He's met by Derek Jackson. He gets a gain of nine there. And then following a couple of plays later, it's Hunter Wolf. He's going to actually slide down right in front of, looks like, uh, Matt Gett, who is our new starter, replacing Chad Parrish from last season. And there goes the quarterback, Corey Ford, goes down and gets his first sack of the season. And now we got them at a third and 16, and he might be brought down. Yes, he is. We get a stop to start the season. They got to punt this ball away. So now we got to figure out how our offense is going to look because we're running a new offense. And look at that. We throw a rope to Freddie Gibson. He makes a great catch for us, picks up the first there. And then now we're going to get John Christensen involved. He's going to run up the gut here for a nice gain of seven. This kind of offense allows more runs, and I'm excited for it because we got two guys in the backfield that are really fast. As Jesse Wallen uses some of that speed to get outside the pocket, gets it out to Freddie Gibson, who, I wish he was a little faster, but he is a blocking tight end. He's still able to pick up the first and then some regardless. And then first and ten here, Jesse Wallen going to drop back the pass. He's going to throw a dart to John Christensen before he gets out of bounds. Eight yards gained on the play right there. Tommy's looking good early on, a lot better than season two. If I say so myself, and then there it is. Kevin Stone dropping a pass. That last name, you know, sometimes fits him well, but, you know, what can I say? As Jesse Wong, he's going to pick up the first anyways, though. It don't even matter. Jesse Wong using that speed to pick up the first down. As now, looking at a first and ten here. Wong's drop, set to drop back the pass. He's looking around, doesn't see anybody. He's going to just scramble. He takes a huge shot out of bounds. But it doesn't even matter because he's able to bounce right back up. Get back to his running back here as John Christensen makes a move. He's going inside and it's first and goal. Beautiful play. Beautiful run by John Christensen. And now Jesse Wallen's going to finish it off with a nice run. Tommies are on the board and we get on first with a 7 to nothing lead late in the first quarter. So now the Monarchs are going to take over here. It late in this first quarter, it's going to be a handoff to Lala Davis. He gets a big gain, only stopped by Justin Swan and a couple other Tommy players for still goes for a first down anyways. As now Wolf is going to try to scramble again. He This time he doesn't pick up as much as he did on previous runs, but he's still close to that first down marker. As now they face a third and one. Wolf's going to drop back the throw, and it's dropped. 
And it's a fourth down, and surprisingly, they are going to punt this ball away back to us. I am guess it's a little too early for them to go for it here as Christensen picks up another nine yards for us. The Tommy offense is rolling now. You love to see it. As there's Christensen again getting another carry. That's two carries in a row. That almost never happens over the course of last season it's a brand new look and right now the new look is looking as we just end the first quarter and we're up seven to nothing and we're looking to make this a two score game as well so now here we go third and 11 first a big challenge of the second quarter and it's nearly caught but it's ultimately dropped we do have to punt this ball away back to the monarchs We'll take over at about the 30 as there's Jeff Outlaw. Looks like breaking up the pass just in time. Could have been a huge game as there was nobody behind him, but it doesn't. But then next play, he's able to pick up the first down on his own anyways, using his legs as we weren't able to contain him in the pocket. He's been a little bit of a problem. But now, second and 10, Wolf, he's going to throw to his left and he's... Breaks the tackle from Marv Santana, and he's going to be brought down by Malachi Jackson, our new custom, one of our new custom recruits for this season. As now they, Old Dominion looks to get on the board here, but will it be a touchdown or a field goal? We'll have to wait and see as Jay Gibson is brought out of bounds about third and five coming up here. As now third and five, Wolf is going to throw to his left, and it's deflected away by Brian Cook. One of the newcomers on this squad, and they had to settle for a field goal. It's still a 7-3 game. Usually, we're uh, involved in shootouts, so this is a, a different kind of game. And a little bit less stressful for me on my end, I'll tell you that much. As we're doing a really good job of controlling the clock as Jesse Wallen, he's going to pick up another first down with the legs. Love that we're utilizing both Jesse Wallen's and John Christensen's skill sets a little bit better. At least early on, as we... Could have done better with their skill sets in the previous season as there's Jesse Wallen again with another first. And the mascot's excited. I'm excited. And I'm sure you guys watching this video right now are pretty excited with the progress so far. As there's Denny Gilkins breaking some tackles. He breaks two tackles. Can he break another one? No. He gets forced out of bounds. But wow. What an effort. That could have been for a loss. It sets for a gain. And it sets up a beautiful throw to Chad McKenzie. For 18 yards, sets up first and goal. And then Desi Lindsay, he comes into the game because Jesse Wallen gets hurt. He breaks some tackles. He's able to make his way to the end zone for another touchdown. So now we're up 14 to 3. And we get a free and out on our next drive. So now we're looking to get some points. A few more points for the end of the quarter. As we throw a dot to Mark McDaniel, man. Desi Lindsay on the run. The backup lock-on quarterback makes a beautiful throw, but then follows it up with that pass, an easier pass, of course, falling incomplete. And so now, second and ten, we're just going to go ahead and run here, get a little bit closer for our kicker. Doesn't exactly work, but no matter, we'll still go about getting this field goal coming up here shortly. As we look to extend our lead here before the end of the first half as Julian McAfee's kick is up and it is good. It's going to be a 14 point game and we're going to go into halftime up 17 to 3. It's currently the biggest lead that we ever had in this series. And now what the good news is is that we get the ball to start the second half because Old Dominion started with the ball to start the game. And so we're going to start things off with John Christensen. Taking it the distance, he gets it across the 35-yard line. It's a great return and a great way to start this second half. So now, so Tommy offense is back on the field. Jesse Wallen is out for the rest of the game with a uh, back spasms. So hopefully it's not that serious, but looks like Desi Lindsay will be playing at quarterback for the rest of the game, but back up. So hopefully that doesn't hurt us too terribly much and it doesn't hurt us right now as Andrew Green is wide open up the middle nobody accounted for him on the play action and Andrew Green gets some huge yards on that one sets a first and goal as Desi Lindsay's gonna run his way through a man doing some big boy moves out here bruh getting another touchdown 
and it's a free score lead how about that and now it's 24 to 3 we have the monarchs on their toes we're not the ones getting our butts kicked it's now other teams getting their butts kicked and we're and it's so amazing to see as there's wolf getting loose as i'm hyping up the squad could have been a loss but i mean we still gotta work on the tackling too <laughs> But now instead we got first and ten. It's going to be a throw to right to Fitzgerald. And he's brought down by, looks like Malachi Jackson again. He's actually, that was Derek Jackson. My apologies. You know, the Jackson brothers on this squad, you know, now are getting me a little bit confused. As well as Davis gets the first down there. But now we got him on a long third and eight. Wolf's going to drop back to pass. going to try and scramble, but it ain't going to work on us this time around. As Justin Parker and Marlon Greenwood combine to uh, stop a quarterback and they have to settle for this field goal attempt and it's actually short. So they don't even come up with any points on that drive and we're going to be taking over here about four and a half minutes left and a 21 point lead. So at this point if we're, we might start thinking about maybe getting some backups in if it keeps going in this kind of direction and it's not because we're losing so badly it's because we have a comfortable lead for the first time in this series and again it's usually so stressful playing these games man i'll tell you what but hey like we have a great lead and our team is playing fantastic right now as on this short second and three for example john christensen makes a guy miss sort of you know doesn't bring him down right away but we get the first anyways you know and our run game is doing so much better and it's been a huge difference this year as John Christensen is just establishing himself. This is a little bit of a come, coming out party for this man. As he has almost 80 yards rushing. Dude was a great receiving back last year. But now we're seeing it with the run game as well. As Kevin Stone gets his first catch for a game 11 on that play. And then following that, there's Kevin Stone all by himself. And he's able to finish the job. And we're up 31-3. to three. It's so amazing. I I can't believe it. We are doing so great right now. As Old Dominion, I'm surprised they're even still trying. We just have locked these boys up throughout the game. And this is a 55 overall team. Not only is it your typical 55 overall team as we get the pass reflection. This is a team of walk-ons and, and one-star players. right? So these are guys that are not heralded out of high school. And they're still able to come together as a squad. And they're playing fantastic right now. And we just playing them when it matters. As Hayden Wolf got the first down off that scramble. It was off a um, halfback screen. Because nobody counted for the quarterback. As Fitzgerald um, picks up nine there. With that little short throw over the middle. So now second and one here. It's Wolf dropping back. He's going to try to throw his left. And he finds Fitzgerald. Once again, it's a 15-yard gain this time around. And right now, they find themselves in Tommy territory here. About two minutes left in the third as Wolf goes over the middle, but nobody is there. Marvin Santana with some great coverage. He hasn't been too active, only two tackles today. But he's been doing a good job in coverage, shutting guys down when need to. And then there's Davis again, pushing down Matt Gent, but... The rest of the Tommies do rally and at least bring him down, slow him down just a little bit. So now, second and nine, Wolf is looking around. He's going to throw to his right to a wide open Terrence Moore. And we're actually really lucky that he went out of bounds because he could have easily gotten to the end zone if he would have stayed in bounds. But then next play, there's Justin Swan to back him up a little bit and give our Tommies some space here on defense. And then a couple plays later, Wolf is going to just throw it out of the end zone and they settle for another field goal so now we find ourselves up 31 to 6 here as Denzi Lindsay he's gonna take a never carry up the gut he's breaks some tackles he nearly gets us to midfield Desi Lindsay doing great with his read option stuff but then right after that he takes a big sack we're just glad he's okay though because we only have one of our quarterback available uh, if Desi Lindsay gets hurt as now there's Andrew Green up the middle last play of the third quarter another big catch Andrew Green you know he's only has two catches but it's been for big yards 
as we go into the final quarter of play, we're up 31 to 6. And all we gotta do is just finish it out for the next seven minutes and we'll go one and zero. Oh. So now, first play of the fourth quarter, it's gonna be a run up the middle for Desi Lindsay. He's gonna pick up five yards this time. They're starting to key in a little bit, so we might start sprinkling in some pass plays, at least some short pass concepts. Since we're dealing with Falcon quarterback here. And I throw this pass late. That is totally my fault. As Desi Lindsay's gonna throw his first interception. He was open. Just had to throw that a little earlier, but, you know, we'll we'll still learn from that. And, you know, we just got to play smart here. These next few minutes here is Lawless Davis is going to end up picking six on that first play after the turnover. So now second and four here from the Monarchs, and Wolf is going to drop back. He's going to throw to an open Harvey. He breaks a tackle, and we're in some trouble now. He might get some to a touchdown, but... We do stop him just outside of the red zone here. And it's going to be first and ten for the Monarchs just outside of the red zone. And now they're in the red zone. It's Marv Santana is there to bring him down just before the first down marker. Second and one coming up here. And the next play, it's a throw to Lava Davis. But then there's Justin Swan going into zone coverage and breaking that pass up. Nice job for Mr. Swan. The next play, Lala Davis is going to get the first down and then a whole lot more. As able to bring it to about the two-yard line here. First and goal, looking to get their first touchdown of the game. And they're going to get it with Hayden Wolf running into the end zone. And now it's 31-13. So now, Tommy's now have the ball back. We're going to throw a short pass to John Christensen. A little halfback screen. Going to pick up some good yards there, at least... Keep the defense from blitzing us a little bit. And then next play, Selvin with the play action. Get it over to Patrick Miller. He makes a nice catch and run for 21. We're back in the red zone again. As now it looks like Desi Lindsay. He looks like he has a nice path to the end zone. It is fumbled. Old Dominion falls on it. And Desi Lindsay turns it over again. Wow. That could have that would have been a touchdown if we would have just finished that just not fumble it I, I'm so speechless right now we could have had these guys finished off but now we gotta go and play some defense so second and ten Monarchs get to about the first down marker and get out of bounds it stops the clock temporarily now third and one it's gonna be a run up the gut and we had the right play call we just couldn't execute oh that hurts so much we had the right Play. it just wasn't there so now it's a first and ten and this time he throws it to his right and Lala Davis goes out of bounds it's a four yard loss and hey that means they gotta kill some more time here and time is definitely on our side as there's Justin Swan again get in the sack that's his second sack of the game as now Hayden Wolf he's gonna throw to his left he's gonna find Fitzgerald and it's well short of marker but we got to be ready because I know these Monarchs are going to go for it here. Try to get one last gas. And there's Wolf dropping back, going over the middle to Lava Davis. And oh my goodness, Brian Cook was blocked. He was there. But they got the first. And now it's still going. So now it's third and eight now. Monarchs are going to try to go for it. And we stop them again. So we have another chance to stop them on the fourth down. Maybe the second time we'll go a little bit better for us here but then Wolf throws a dart to the left hand side no one's there to cover Terrence Moore on that play and so now they keep their drive alive and after two fourth down conversions this drive is still alive and so is their chance to win the game to a degree as Harvey burns the defense no one accounts for him and suddenly we're looking at a 12 point game Pending this two-point conversion could be 10 points, and they get the two-point conversion, and it's now just a 10-point game. So now, of course, they're going to go for the onside kick, and it's bouncing around, and the Monarchs fell on it. So now, suddenly, with less than two minutes, there is a flicker of hope that Old Dominion can come back here and first play. Well, one of the first plays, it's a big throw to the left-hand side. It's caught, but luckily he's out of bounds. So now it's 4th and 12 here as we get to him right in time. But then there's Collins mossing 
our boy Marv Santana. He was there, but he just gets mossed by Collins. And so again, free fourth down conversions to end this game. It's still going, but as Jackson drops that pass, we have been a long fern down, but for the love of God, can we please get a stop here on defense? As there's, we were there, but we can't make the tackle when we need to, and Lala Davis picks up the first. So now, first and ten, basically a first and goal situation. It's a throw up the middle to Lala Davis, and he gets into the end zone, and with the extra point, they do get the extra point. It's a field goal game. And so now it comes down to this. They got to get the onside kick, but there's Jad McKenzie to pick up the onside kick. Granted, they do have three timeouts. We're not out of the woods yet, but we will pick up some first downs, and we will finally be able to kneel down with about a minute left. And that is going to do it here, ladies and gentlemen. We win this game, but oh my goodness, did this game nearly give me an actual heart attack. We won 31 to 28, but keep in mind, the Monarchs fought really hard to come back. It was they scored 22 unanswered points in the fourth quarter and nearly came back and won this game. Wow. What an ESPN classic. So checking up the stats for today's game, you know, we had two quarterbacks come in uh, since Jesse Walsh did get hurt in the middle of the game. So Desi Lindsay came in for a little bit, and he was actually pretty solid. 150 yards, one touchdown. He had one interception. Um, that was more in the corner, doing a really good job anticipating, but he was actually doing a pretty good job backing up for us. For our running game, you know, we ran the ball a lot more, and... You know, I felt really positive about the results. Uh, John Christensen led us today with over 110 yards rushing on the ground. Um, Jesse Wallen also scored a touchdown before leaving the game. And then Desi Lindsay used those legs to get two rushing touchdowns for us, which ultimately was the difference. For our receivers, uh, we didn't throw the ball too much since we had the backup in the game. But John Christensen unsurprisingly led us with receptions. However, Andrew Green, the true freshman and custom recruit, led us with 68 receiving yards today just off of two catches. And then Kevin Stone off of two catches also caught the only touchdown pass for the Tommies. Finally, taking a look at this defense, and it's a much improved defense from last year. Brian Cook actually led us in tackles today. That's the first time I said his name on this series, I'm pretty sure. Um, Derek Jackson and Marv Santana each got six tackles of peace for the squad. And we also did a really good job of getting after this quarterback, particularly William Swan, who came in with this past recruiting class. He came out in a big way. He had three sacks today, which did tie the school record for most sacks in a game. Corey Ford also chipped in with a sack as well. We also didn't get any turnovers in today's game. All right, guys. So next time out, we are going to be remaining at home where we'll take on the Tulane Green Wave, who is making their first appearance of the season. But Kirk Herstrick is still going to rock with them, which, you know, that's fair because we may not be the best team on paper. But I feel like we can still do some special things. But, hey, that's all. That's going to be it for today. So make sure you smash that like button. Hit me up in the comments as well as subscribe to the channel if you are new. I'm John J Gaming, and I will see you guys next time. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.